Hi everyone, welcome back to The Loft, lovely to see you. Hi guys. So today, Dan, I mean it's very hot, it's very warm. It's very hot, but we've still got we're time because we're heroes. We're smart, we, we don't shirk our responsibilities to you yeah. as professionals. We're talking about, our, I think, one of our new favourite houses. Yeah, or a new Rook. discovery, yeah. yeah a, new, a new joyful discovery that we've made yeah. in the past few which months. We, which we mentioned in our last but one video, I think. Yes. So Rook uh, Perfumes, very new uh, very uh, British space house, uh, and we uh, reviewed Thurible, which is a kind of a, an incense-y, kind of leathery, ashy scent. But I, I, we really got this kind of Coca-Cola or Dr. Peppery vibe. Yeah, um, it was but a real it, fizzy opening, wasn't it? Yeah, which but was it's very really, um, well, there it is, but it's, it's really also kind of slightly piney camphor. Yeah. Yeah, really like interesting uh, niche, a uh, niche. Um, beautiful fragrance. I mean, it, it definitely feels niche, doesn't it? It doesn't yeah, feel totally. like a designer scent. It feels like it's trying to be original and creative, which is uh, what we like about for it. For a first, you know, for a first sniff of, of that of that house's offerings, um, I was intrigued to smell more. Yeah, and we have so, more. So we have uh, another one. We've got well, two fragrances we're going to look at today. We've got undergrowth, yeah. which is uh, in this little bottle here, and we've also got a very small, just a sample. This one is rook. Um, uh, so let's. This is the latest of, this, of the this house. Is, this isn't is it? the newest the new one to be released. Um, so this is this was released. This is undergrowth released at the, the same time as Durable and Neroli yeah. and Suede and Amber. Um, Neroli as well. Was there Neroli? Yes. Yeah. Um, this. It, it's. Ex I mean, it's such a good name because you really get. Um, kind of what, 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 you, what you would expect. Let's have a, a fresh spray, but oh, you, wow, yeah. just, just off the cap, you get this really distinctive soil That's accord. Really yeah, it I smells mean, like it smells like dirt. It smells like you're walking through a forest, okay. and I can oh, I get I really get a big waft of it straight off there. Oh, it's stunning, isn't it? Yeah, it's I mean it's like burying your nose in a mound of damp soil. Yeah. It's so original and it's kind of creative. Nestled I mean, away by I don't know, a, I don't know quite how he's created it because we were saying earlier we how wonder if there's bits wonderful. of patchouli uh, which creates that yeah. kind of, that sense of dryness. But it doesn't. It doesn't smell like a patchouli scent. It smells like dirt. It's uh, yeah. To me, the patchouli thing I mentioned to you earlier when I when I smelled it for the first time was just an association yeah. that I have between patchouli and damp earth. Yeah, exa exactly. But yeah. I think actually it's a red herring. I think. That's the thing, by, by giving a fragrance so the name clever. of undergrowth, you've got an image in your head, so yeah, whether, it be, whether it be a forest floor or anything, oh, that's what I expect to smell. Um, yeah. But then the interesting thing which leaps out at me very soon is this really beautiful bright <sighs> mint. Yeah. Um, uh, and it kind of, for me, it starts off kind of mentholy, and then it develops yeah. into a slightly fuller, leafier... Um, yeah, it's almost, as, it's almost like the dampness is the first thing that you smell if you enter the forest, but if you stay there for a while, you forget about the dampness. Yeah, and it kind of And you actually up. appreciate the shrubbery and you, yeah. the greenness of it. Um, but it really lures you in, I think. Yeah, yeah it's really, and there's, there's just a hint of, of other kind of fruit, like what, of orange or mandarin, I'm not sure. It's just a hint of something else. There is, isn't there? Um, and I found, on me, I found as it, uh, as it develops, um, I get this this kind of soil tincture slightly kind of um, just drifts away, and I get more vetiver. So the, right at the end of it, I get more vetiver with just a yeah. subtle hit of, hit of mint. There's a wonderful dryness lurking underneath yeah. that, that damp that dampness. It's a it? really quality scent, and it's one I, I my, my my wife tried this, and as she walked past me, I got little wafts um, wafts from her. It just smells absolutely fantastic, and it smells really, really original. Yeah, totally. I've, I mean, I can't think of anything I've smelled that, that, that has that effect. Yeah. And, you know, f for me, the thing that got me into perfume in the first place was perfume that transports you somewhere else. Yeah. It's not necessarily about this smells nice, that's like a lemon, that smells of mm. sherbet. It's, a, it's about being taken somewhere. And then letting your imagination do the rest, letting your imagination fit in all the gaps. But what's great what as well is that, that he's me. really managed to do it, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't smell as it doesn't smell like a car crash of ingredients that you don't, no. wanna, don't want to smell like. It smells really beautiful. And I would happily wear that all day it. long. Yeah. Very I know what you mean about the, the, the sort of mandarin. Yeah, there's, there's something a bit, orangey, there's a bit of it? something else, isn't there? And yeah, um, it's, or, it's sort of like a very autumnal collection of, of, of not spices necessarily, but all the ingredients you'd need to make yeah. a really good mulled wine that was very earthy and But then warming. I also get, I also get, the mint gives a kind of springy feel to it. Yeah. I was trying to think what season would this be, um, you know, ideal wearing for, and you maybe think autumn initially, but I think spring as well. I would wear that in um, the spring. The other thing I would say about this is... It makes you smile, is, doesn't it? The dampness and the thing, the earth could make you think, ah, oh, forest. Yeah. 
but actually then a little bit goes, it's fine, you're perfectly safe. The other thing the about this is, I got oh, on Thurible, I found it, it, it did last, um, Thurible, I did, it did last well, um, I, I did feel, find it turn into something of a, of a skin scent after an hour or two, whereas I think uh, with undergrowth, I find it lasts um, quite a lot better actually. Yeah. And I noticed it on myself, I also noticed my wife when she was wearing it, a few hours later I was still really getting all of that mint and, 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 every, and everything. It's yeah, really cool I mean I'm looking forward to seeing how this develops, but I think, I think for me something that I love at the opening is important, but also something where I can detect that it's going to take you on a bit of a journey. Yeah, yeah. And I get that with this. Okay, so now... Great work. Something, like something completely different. What so do we have this is um, Rook. Rook itself. Uh, by Rook. And whilst these other ones, so Thurible has given us this uh, image of what are these incense bearers with smoky incense, under Earth has given us the Im image of a forest. This is just called Rook. So this mm. is, I think they refer to it as their um, signature fragrance, and they say it's, it's smoky and, in and incense-y. I mean, and really the, the opening is certainly yeah. very, very, really, really smoky. I mean, the, the big note I get, which he doesn't list, is birch. Yeah. I get loads of birch. So birchy. Really, really birchy. And the thing, the, the fragrance which immediately um, <laughs> came to my mind was patchouli by Lilabo. Um, and I remember wearing a patchouli by Lilabo, and I heard two guys walking behind me going, can you smell grilled meat? <laughs> yeah, it smells like someone's barbecue. That could often just be you. It could just, I mean, it could just be possible. me. Could not have been... Uh, uh, wow, yeah, I love that though. But, but I really get a lot yeah. of that. Um, and also, there's something quite boozy there. Like, um, yeah. if, you, if you had some sort of really hot bacon on a, on a grill, yeah. and like a maple, a maple glaze or, or a bourbon, I'm gonna it on me. a bourbon glaze. I think on that's what it is. It's that kind of like slightly bourbon quality. And there are quite a few... Really good. Bloody there are several animalics listed in this, one of them being castorium, and I definitely get the yeah. castorium quite soon in this, which I think adds the boozy quality. And about half an hour into this, that booziness kind of came out, and the, the fragrance I thought of was was rhinoceros, yeah, uh, by zoologist, which is a kind of uh, has this boozy, leathery castorium kind of quality. But it's, there. I mean, it's still a mile apart, isn't it? Hmm. But actually, now you smell that again, and I feel, going, I find more entirely. and more with, with, as it dries down, there's a slight oh. sweetness to it. Yeah, I, um, straight away there actually, I was getting a slight, um, a slight Turkish powdery rose, yeah, I something. Think, yeah, and the, the sweetness, we, when we, we were talking about this a bit earlier, and we did mention Tower, yeah. actually that sweetness reminds me a bit of the Tower Aid. Yeah, of, there's, uh, a lovely, there's a lovely, like an orange fizz or something yeah. that you get. It, it gives you a little bit of a detour to your nose, I think. Yeah, I find... It gives you a bit of a bum steer before I, you I find get it, your nose. Uh, with, with the others... With undergrowth, um, we had this really clear vision of the forest, whereas this you don't have that to steer you. So I feel it's taking us in different directions, and as it develops, I get a little bit more uh, tobacco comes out yeah. in the mid, um, and I actually do get a bit of floral, get a hint of violet. Uh, and then yeah. the other thing I get further into this, which again I don't think he lists oh, tonka bean, but I get that slight kind of creamy sweetness. There's something rounding it off in the bottom. I mean, this yeah. is old now. Yeah, that, that was kind of fruit. But I'm, I'm getting, I mean, I don't know if you get it there, I'm getting a little bit of something to round it yeah. at the base. I don't know, I, there's also, I'm not getting so much sweetness. I think sweetness there's um, on, on a, a musk mallow, which is um, it's ambrette, yeah. which is this kind of um, vegetable muskiness, which I guess has a slight sweetness to it. Yeah. So we're getting a bit of that as well. Um, I don't, I'm trying to, there are lots of other things in the I list like which I don't get. I don't really get ginger, I don't get cardamom, I don't get ylang ylang. No. I don't really fill in with that. What it starts with this is big um, birchy birch, smokiness, um, which is eventually joined by tobacco mm. and some animalics, and then it ends up with this kind of uh, slightly sweetened, warm tobacco. Yeah. Um, Very unapologetic. I yeah. Like, I like I like that a lot. Uh, I, did, I did find after about two hours this became um, a skin scent. It, yeah. it kind of ended up sitting kind of quite close to me, but I still think the quality was there. And I found it very different to the other two. I found Rook to be a little, I don't know if refined is, is, the, is the right word, but it's a little bit rounded. Whereas the yeah. other, I think the other, the other two fragrances gave you this kind of big punch. Even though this has uh, animalics listed uh, in the notes list, it's not a big punchy animalic fragrance. It's very beautiful. No. I would say it's quite a, a sexy, uh, it's definitely a sexy fragrance. Yeah. It, I mean, I don't associate this with, with the sort of challenging animalics. I associate it with using the animalics. It is very sexy. In a, I mean, that smells sexy. Yeah, in a, exactly. It's, yeah. it's a very enticing fragrance. Mm. And actually, 
I would say it's very beautiful. I mean, there aren't many fragrances that open with that huge birch yeah, yeah. storm that I would describe as beautiful. But yeah, but I, think, but I think you think it's going to stay this big... It has a wonderful elegance. Al well, almost aggressive smokiness, but that kind of dies down. Um, should we also mention the, uh, the price? So these fragrances... Yeah, I mean, which, such great uh, So the introductory now offer has now expired. So these 30 ml bottles are now £50, but he's yeah, doing at 20% off, um, which means they're, what's that, 40 quid. Yeah. So they're now, they're now 40 pounds uh, for a 30 mil bottle, which will go a long way. Um, Rook, I've just got a little sample, which you can also buy um, from the website. This is a slightly bigger bottle. This comes in a 50 mil bottle, which is 80 quid. Yeah. Um, but if you take, there's a 20% off, so that leaves you with 64 pounds. 64 pounds for 50 mil, which I think is actually slightly, slightly better value than yeah. 40 quid for 30 mil. But either way, you're still getting, you know, these are high, high quality niche eau de parfum. You're getting more than your money's worth. With, so I really think, I think they, they, are, uh, they are good uh, value. Um, now, so far, we, we've smelt three fragrances. Which, which do you prefer? Overall, actually I love them all in different ways, but overall still, for me, undergrowth, undergrowth kind of fascinates me. Yeah, I would say, in a way, I think Rook is possibly the most beautiful and the most refined, yeah. but I, I find undergrowth really, really original and yeah. really interesting, and I think the performance is also a bit better on this, so this, this, yeah. this one's um, for and me. And bear in mind, I mean, another thing which we, should, which we should mention, and I don't know if we've talked about this, but you know, look at, the, look at the level in that bottle. It's right up at the top. These things only perform better and better, I think. Yeah, as they go. Yeah, yeah. And al already this thing, this thing has a journey to it. Yeah. You know, I, th I think it's incredible. Um, and there's no one else out there putting out stuff like this. I mean, it's, it's a sort of race to the bottom at the moment, I think, with, yeah, I think with it, perfume, isn't it? But it's it? really, I think it's, it's so exciting to see yeah, a house like These first it. releases, I think that they're, they're, they're bold. Yeah. And I think it's exciting for what's to come. Coraggio. Yeah, indeed. Anyway, go out and try them, especially if do, you want to try this do. new Rook, uh, this comes as a sample like this. You can also get a sample set with the rest of them, so go to the website, check them out, enjoy Very them, good. love them, smell them. Yeah, and tell us what you think, you know, comment under here or up here, where is it? No, we're this we're way down. Down here, down here. We're down here. Yeah. Um, and just tell us what you think, we'd be glad to know. Yeah, but until next we'll time, happy sniffing. Bye. Bye.